resignation continues to change the face of the workforce really as we know over the last six months 24 million people voluntarily quit their jobs yeah we've been talking about it for months but now we want to delve it deeper into where people are going and what they're doing to put food on the table so we turn to the folks at entrepreneur magazine who decided to look into this and and they found that you may recognize the next batch of entrepreneurs because they're going to look like a lot more like your friends your family neighbors Maybe even you. Editor-in-Chief Jason Pfeiffer joins us this morning to shed some light on what they found. Good morning, Jason. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So the pandemic gave a lot of people a lot of time to refocus and kind of think about what they really want to do. Instead of calling it the great resignation, though, you're calling it what? Well, it could be the great buy-in, the great entrepreneurship, whatever it is, people are looking for more control over their lives. And for many of them, that means being their own boss, starting their own business. The numbers on this are staggering. New business applications since the pandemic began have nearly doubled. And wow. what are these new businesses? Well, there are all kinds, of course, but what we found is a huge influx into franchising. So for people who aren't familiar, franchising is, it's almost like buying a ready-made business. You're buying a unit or a location in an established brand that's looking to grow. McDonald's and Taco Bell are right. great, obvious examples of this. But there are versions of this, there are thousands of franchises in every possible industry, cleaning services, travel agencies, lawn care, and this is where people are going. So, and, and, and are these full-fledged, full-time positions and businesses, obviously with name brands like you're just mentioning, or is this uh, people dabbling in it and, and really focusing on some money-making hobbies that they can also do from home while taking a break from, say, like a nine-to-five? So it could be either. I mean, this is the thing. There are thousands of these brands out there. And so if you buy if it's something that requires you to invest in a storefront, which is very expensive, and then open it and operate it, that's a full-time job without question and a very hard one. But then there are also brands like travel agencies, for example, that you can do from home mm -hmm. and you can scale it up as you want. So you can fit it into whatever lifestyle you have. Okay. When you talk about franchises, though, sorry to go back, but isn't that kind of risky? Well, I mean, look, any business involves risk. Yeah. But the thing about franchises that is very appealing to people is that you're going into a brand that already has an established system. Okay. So that means that you there there's a, a brand that already exists. They have already figured out exactly how to operate that business, how to identify customers. They can help yeah. you along the way. Does that mean that it is a guaranteed success? Absolutely not. You have to do your research just as you would for any brand. And so there are franchises that thrive and thousands of units open up and there are ones that collapse and you have to be smart about the business that you get into. Yeah, I mean, because sometimes during the pandemic, especially you've definitely seen some shuttered name brand mm -hmm. coffee shops, for example, around the streets of New York City. But there's also this whole idea of really starting your own business, put the franchise aside, right? And starting mm -hmm. your own business, which is not easy, but are you seeing that actually happen? Oh yeah, for sure. I, I mean, we did a, look, this is gonna be a self-selecting group of people who are coming to Entrepreneur, but we did a survey of our readers and we found that 60% of them had started a business during the pandemic. Now this could be anything, right? This could be starting a business where you're just uh, knitting something and selling it yeah. online, or it could be where you opened up a storefront, like I said, or you opened up some larger business, you went out and you got investment money for it. There are all sorts of businesses that are being started. I think the great thing about a moment like now or the last two years is that a moment of great disruption can be a moment of big opportunity where there are new needs that mm. need to be met and also where established players have gotten shaken up and have they've created some white space where maybe they're not serving people in the way that people want to be served and that's a great time to come in mm -hmm. and innovate and say hey i've got a solution i am here for you you know the idea of making more money is obviously very appealing to a lot of folks but how do you know you know what i'm ready to take the leap and become my own boss become an entrepreneur that's a great question. I, I like to say, and I think entrepreneurs often like to say that if you could do something else right, other yeah. than be an entrepreneur, then go do that. Because in many ways, that's easier. There's a lot more stability in working for uh, you know somebody else, working for a company that's going to take care of a lot of the things for you. So oftentimes, I, I want to be really clear, like this is not, you know, starting a business is not uh, selling snake oil. This is hard yeah. work. 
This is hard, hard work. And you need to know that this is something that you are so passionate about. You want control over your own life. And I will tell you for the people who choose that path, what they find is that even though it is very hard, it is often much more satisfying than doing anything else. I, there's this yes. line I love from the brain coach, Jim, Jim Quick, who says, burnout isn't doing too much. It's doing too little of what you love. Mm, that's so, a great quote, but here's the thing. When you, st people leave their jobs for this work-life balance, right? Like that's the yeah. whole idea of this great resignation. Doesn't that kind of go out the window if you're launching your own business? Well, it certainly can, again, depending on the business that you build. So if you are opening a storefront, if you are doing something that requires you to be on all the time and then even when you're not serving customers to be constantly dealing with logistics and whatever then yeah it is it is an all the time kind of thing and then at that point you're not just looking to save time what you're doing is you're looking to build something for yourself i mean you have to really step back and ask yourself what is it that you want out of work mm -hmm. do you just want money because if you just want money there are other ways to do this i am not here to say that starting your own business is a get rich quick scheme it is not but you can certainly build a kind of business that does fit your lifestyle more i'll give you an example so just to go back to franchising there are travel agency businesses. Travel agency businesses generally operate from home and you can scale that up as much or as little as you want. Now, that means, of course, that you're making a decision about the kind of income that you're bringing in. So either yeah. you have a spouse who's bringing in some other income or you have some other way that you're making money. But you could be doing this also on the side so that you grow it to the point where exactly. you don't consider it your full-time job until it is making you full-time income. Mm. Yeah, well, Jason, we have run out of time. We could talk to you forever about this, but I think it's also very important to to do something that you love. We appreciate you, Jason, right. editor in chief of Entrepreneur Magazine. We always appreciate, hey, appreciate your you guys. All right, take care.